Good evening guys, welcome to night two of the Synergy 516 build video series. Uh, just a quick recap, last night we got the bulk of the mainframe built. Wait this out a little bit for you. She's sitting on her own skids, bearing plates are in. We are ready to start dealing with the main gear. Again, we are following this in manual order. Next up is the main gear, main pulley. Uh, the uh, I mentioned this in last night's video, but didn't really explain why. I have not put the gyro tray in just yet because the um, elevator servo is much easier to access without this in there. So I built it, put Loctite to four, Phillips screws to hold it to the frame spacers. I just I will put this in after the servos are in. So uh, right away we're, you're looking at the main gear, the main pulley assembly. Um, this all comes as one piece. You're going to want to completely tear it down like I've done. These bronze bushings like other Synergy kits, these go on either side of the one-way bearing. Those need Loctited in. There are 16 bolts holding the flanges on this main pulley. These need individually pulled one by one and re -Loctited. Uh It's a little tedious, but the good news is this should be a, one, a lifetime part. You'd have to just absolutely destroy the kit. Believe me, this piece wouldn't be um, the deciding factor to re-kit. If you bent this, you got other problems. So uh, be sure to you take your time. Be sure to get all 16 of these bolts locked tighted and snugged up. Don't over tighten them. It is aluminum, and uh, that piece will last forever. You also have these two Delrin shims that go on either side of the sleeve. One goes here. One's going to go on top of the one-way bearing. That just lets everything kind of rotate in its place. So what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, reassemble everything with the proper Loctite, um, lubricate the one-way bearing with lightweight oil. I like using the Triflow needle. Uh, there are four bolts that hold the one-way hub to the main gear. Don't Remember, do not over-tighten those. Delrin will crack if you're not careful. Snug them up and let the Loctite do its job. So I'm going to cut the camera, get this all reassembled, and uh, come right back. All right, guys, here it is, the completed main gear and pulley assembly. Uh, all four of the main gear bolts are Loctited. I used red Loctite to hold the bushings in, lubricated the one-way bearing with some light triflow oil. All 16 of the aluminum uh, flange built, uh, screws, little two millimeter screws, are all Loctited with blue and tight. Uh, dry fit um, using the Jesus bolt to hold everything together and it all spins nice and free. It looks good. Um, the next step in the manual does have us installing the main gear assembly along as well as using which requires preloading the belt. Now the belt comes in the kit pre-installed in the tail box so you will have to take the tail box apart to get the belt out. Trust me you don't want to try to do the belt and then do the tail box and then slide the main belt in. It's much easier to build the tail box around the belt later. So take a few minutes. The tail box has got to come apart to, to lock tight anyway. Go ahead and take the tail box apart and uh, pull the belt out. This is the right time to be dealing with the belt. Um, this is going to be really, really hard to do on camera. Um, so I'm not going to try. So when I get the main gear and pulley assembly and belt in the frame, I'll come back and show you um, how it all looks. All right, I've gone a little white on the camera. As you can see, I now have the main gear and the pulley in. There is a uh, 10 by 12 by 0 0.25 shim that goes between the lower fan hub and the lower bearing block. Uh, that's very important. That's what takes up all of the vertical slack. As, as you probably can't tell, but there is absolutely zero up and down movement on that main shaft with that shim in there. The single Jesus bolt, there aren't two collars like on some of the models. A single Jesus bolt holds it all together. Uh, the belt is pulled through the tensioner straight. There's no twisting or anything through the tensioner. It just comes in right down the middle of the pulleys. And then the, uh, the twisting of the belt to a set tail rotation is done uh, mid, mid boom like most helis. Um, one thing to note on the main shaft, there are exactly two holes in the main shaft and they're not uniform. There is an opening uh, that is 8 millimeters from the top and an, eight, an opening that is 11 and a half millimeters from the bottom of the shaft. Uh, the longer space on the bolt on the hole goes down here by the hub. 
the head rests on the shorter, the hole that is closer to the top of the main shaft. So you gotta make sure you get that alignment right. The next step of the manual is put the boom in and start uh, and feed the belt through there. That's pretty straightforward. Um, I've I have found that if you take the um, tail control rod and use it as a guide to kind of poke the boom the uh, belt down the boom, it's pretty easy. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the camera there, get the boom on it, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, there it is. Tail boom and belt are in. Don't mind the battery. As we get more and more parts built onto the tail, this is becoming more and more tail heavy. I have them out in any electronics, as you can see, so the battery is just letting me uh, keep it on the skids. So two things about the tail, tail belt installation. Like all Synergy helicopters, you want to make sure you align the front of the boom with the front edge of the front boom clamp. With this model, that is very easy. It's easy to get to the boom clamp from the top or the bottom. Top, more so if you leave the gyro plate out like I did. So get the boom lined up with the boom clamp, snug it down good. Um, like I said, fishing the boom, the belt through the short boom was not a problem. Uh, the tensioner, I did go ahead and put the spring on, the tensioner spring, just because I do have the belt in there now. You can start seeing how that works as I pull on the belt. The very next step is to start building the tail box. So we're going to take a break, clear the table, break the tail box down, and we'll start talking about how that goes together. All right, guys, as you can see, I have the tail box tore apart on the bench here. You've got uh, pretty some, tip, some familiar items here. This is the all-metal tail pitch slider that was introduced with the E7SE that is now uh, standard on new kits going forward, on uh, new models, rather. The, um, it's upgrade on existing kits. So the 516 does get the all-metal tail pitch slider. You are going to want to make sure you not only lock tight this pivot ball, but as well as back the brass bushing out and uh, lock tight it to the aluminum ring. One note, this brass bushing, because of the way the tail rotates, is a reverse thread, so it's righty-loosey, lefty-tighty. Don't strip your, um, mar up your bronze bushing, trying to get that, brass bushing rather, trying to get, the, get it out of there by turning it backwards. Um, this is a new bell crank. Um, I want to point out that it is aluminum. That's great. Everybody, Matt's been listening. People seem to prefer their bling. Um, you got to be careful, though. Do not be tempted to put this aluminum bell crank on the E5. Uh, it is a different ratio than the E5, N7, and E7 SE. You cannot use it um, on the existing models. It's 516 specific. It is also different from the 766 arm. 766 arm being much larger for obvious reasons. Um, the idler pulley does have two um, small uh, radial bearings and a brass spacer in between. And then two larger brass spacers that center the idler pulley in the tail case. The purpose of this pulley is to help guide the belt as it's coming off of the uh, tail, tail gear, which is where the belt tends to slack under load. So we definitely want to make sure we get that in there. We'll talk about some tricks on making sure you don't over tighten that when we get that far. The uh, tail output gear on these is a hard coat, should be a lifelong part. There are two versions of this available depending upon your tail speed. Um, uh, your tail, your head speed and tail speed um, plans. By default, I'm double checking the manual, by default this is the 20 tooth. There is an 18 tooth available if you're going to run, uh, maybe think about down the road stretching this to a 5.56. Five, we do have a couple of team members testing that. Um, so Matt did design an 18 tooth version of this to speed the tail back up should you decide to stretch it and run with lower head speeds. So lots of flexibility as you would come to expect with Matt's kits. Um, the tail box itself is all new as you can imagine since this does need to slide on the tail boom. Uh, one thing to note there is a slight ridge on this tail box keeps it from sliding down on too far which is nice you can slide it on all the way you bottom it out snug it up a little bit build your tail case around the belt and then pull it out as an assembly to tighten it up because it is a belt design there's no um, provision for pinning the tail you are going to need to adjust your tail tension as the belt wears, so pinning the tail would not be a good idea. You could pin the boom at the front if you wanted to, but it's a belt. It's not going to fly apart. If the belt breaks and the boom, um, the boom might come off, but if the belt breaks, you got other problems anyway. So uh, Again, all high quality CNC, nice polished finish aluminum, uh, tight tolerances as you'd expect with one of Matt's kits. 
goes together really nice. Um, there is a shim uh, that goes between the tail output shaft and the outside uh, bearing case. It can be put on either side of the, uh, it will fit on either side of the tail output shaft. We want to make sure we get it on the right side. Really nice to see Matt using uh, hard coat pinion here. It's just, it's going to be a lifelong part and not have to worry about that. Alright guys, um, I'm going to try to position the, cam the um, camera so that you can see the tail box as I work on building it. Uh, as I mentioned before, there is a ridge on this tail case that will allow you to only slide it on so far. I need to loosen my clamp just a touch. Alright, so now I can slide that all the way until it bottoms out. And now I don't have to worry about, I can build my tail box around, like, around the tail belt without worrying about the tail case sliding all the way in. Um, by default, um, the belt should come through the boom straight horizontal like this. You are going to want to grab it and turn it 90 degrees counterclockwise, as seen from the rear. That will give you the proper counterclockwise rotation of the tail as it rotates. Uh, the tail boxes are, there is a left and right tail box. It's pretty easy to tell which one's which. The tail, tail side panel, rather, that has the three bolt, uh, excuse me, three holes on uh, in front of the tail shaft is the right side. Um, those hole, that third hole is to accommodate the bell crank. Therefore, the side that only has two is your left side. You do need to have your tail fin handy. Uh, two of the screws that hold the tail case on are also two screws that hold the tail fin on, so you're going to want to have your tail fin handy. I'm going to go ahead and cut the camera, partially build the tail, so you can then bring you come back and show you how things start looking. All right, guys, I'm going to try to sh show you what I've done so far. The this is the, it, I found it to be far easier to put the pinion on the tail output shaft. It uh, gives you a good opportunity to make sure the set screws lined up at the flat spot. Get it nice and tight. I did use red Loctite there. This is not a set screw we want to have come loose, cause you to have a bad day. As you can see, I did bolt on the left side uh, tail box, tail case side, with, which does include um, mounting the tail fin. The belt is pulled through. <coughs> right now, we can put that into the bearing, leave the belt a little bit loose for now, and now we can begin building the right side of the tail case. Uh, I did want to point out to make sure that you do realize that the, Id the, the two holes on these side cases that hold the idler pulley go on the top side. Um, that's very important. Uh, if you try to build the tail case with the idler on the bottom, nothing's going to line up. So that's a, another real easy way to tell which way is left, right, left side, right side. I'm going to go ahead and, ca and cut the camera, bolt the right side on, bolt the uh, bell crank on. One quick note, I did use red Loctite to hold the pivot ball on the bell crank. Another uh, point you do not want to have come loose. There is a nylock nut holding these pivot screw in. You won't need to Loctite that, but I did pull it apart make sure all the shims were in the appropriate places and snug it back up. I'm going to go ahead and cut the camera, uh, finish building the tail case, and I'll show you the finished product. Alright guys, there it is. Tail box is built. Um, as you can see, it is still loose on the shaft. I haven't set the belt tension yet. I'm going to do that absolutely last. Um, <clears throat> two things. One, you do want to make sure that you size these uh, links on the pitch links. Uh, these do use the standard 5.5 millimeter balls that Matt uses on his other kits. You will want to make sure you size those with your Bodo sizer, otherwise you could have some restrictions and binding on the tail grips, never a good thing. Also, when you're installing this idler, I talk, said I was going to talk to you about that. thing to keep in mind is, this has a nylock nut on it for a reason. You do not want to tighten this to the point where it's clamping. You just want to snug this bolt up so it can't travel. You need this idler to spin freely with the tail shaft and belt. That is what keeps the belt lined up with the tail shaft with the tail gear and if there's any restrictions on the bearings or any restrictions on that pulley uh, it's going to wear up your wear out your belt real fast so make sure you do not over tighten this bolt again it's a nylock nut let the nylock nut do its job just 
cinch it down so the bolt can't travel and call it a day. Uh, the next step in the manual is the tail shaft, the, excuse me, the tail rotor, which is a, re, which is a standard part on all the Synergy models. Um, I will go ahead and break this down, double check the thrust bearing orientations and the radial bearing orientations, lube everything with my Bodo lube, lock tight the spindles, lock tight these balls, and then now is a good time to test fit your links while you can still take this slider off easily so you can fine tune the fit on those in your um, much easier. I'm not going to necessarily film breaking this down. It's the same tail hub and tail rotor assembly as on all of the other Synergy models. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You have an inner and out, a radial bearing, a thrust bearing on both sides. You have a six millimeter grub screw on, excuse me, a four millimeter grub screw on each end. Um, pretty straightforward. Uh, I do like that, um, like the 766. Since the 766 forward, the tail grips have these grease portholes in them, so you can easily service and re-grease your thrust bearings down the road. Don't be shy about greasing these. Um, you got to keep in mind, your tail rotor is doing anywhere between 9 and 11,000 RPM, depending upon your head speed and gear ratio. The grease in here is going to spin out over time. Do not be shy about squirting some more grease in those ports um, semi-regularly. I'm going to go ahead and cut the camera and finish building the tail. And when we come back, if I remember correctly, and I am going to double check the manual here real quick. If I remember correctly, we get to move on to the fun stuff. Yep, next up is the swash plate and the main head. So we're getting pretty close to having this airframe done.